what made you become interested in emotional eating? Yeah. So I think it all, when you ask this question to people, like, what are you, it all boils down to you, to you and your personal journey. And definitely it was my personal journey. Um, I've counted, I've done 21 diets Mm. uh, and I'm 37 years old. So you can imagine. Which was the best? (laughs) (laughs) Is there one that works? The first one, the first one, because it's the only one that works. And then afterwards it doesn't work. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so 21 diets, I, I started before teenage years. And, uh, you know, most of them didn't work. Um, And then I realized that at that time I was starting therapy and everything. And one book led to the other. And I found this book called um, Breaking Free from Emotional Eating by Janine Roth. Um, And I started reading it. And it's the first time I realized, yeah, actually, the diets don't work. Not because I don't have willpower. Not because my body is flawed and doesn't want to respond. But because I'm using food as a tool to cope with life. So it started with me for a few years. I started to really introspect every aspect of me. Um, it was during the pandemic, so it's good because you're at home. You you have you, the luxury to do it. Um, and then I started my podcast and I realized there's every, like, I thought it was a niche thing, but I realized everyone can relate to it for, in some shape or form. Maybe 80 to 90% of people can relate to emotional eating. Um, I can definitely relate yeah. to that. And I think, um, you know, um, I had been a dentist, we we're all so strict on mm. ourselves in terms of sugar. Yeah. And, you know, even more is talked about sugar now. But in reality, I do say to people, you need your blood sugar as well. We yeah. don't want you yeah. <laughs> fainting and, um, because you're so strict uh, not eating sugar. But there's better sugars that you can eat, you know, not necessarily refined white sugar, but, you know, there's honey or more natural sugars. And, yeah, sometimes you you need a little bit of sugar. So it's not to absolutely eliminate something, but it, it's about kind of bringing it into more equilibrium, you know. Yeah, um, definitely. And it has been shown that the, if you restrict too much, people will binge. Hmm. So definitely, like, great advice that you're giving to your patients, the balance. Um, the other thing is that, especially for emotional eating, is the way... I always say this uh, on social media, it's neither good nor bad. Sometimes it's uh, good because you, the emotions you're feeling are so strong, so unbearable, that it's the, if you're on the safest or the healthiest thing to do. But the moment, uh, the only thing you do to soothe your emotion, the only tool you have in life is food, is sugar, then it becomes problematic. Mm. So it's like, yeah, finding this balance, of course, you have everyone, like it's human nature, it's like survival to eat sugar, yeah, to feel yeah. better. Mm. It will release dopamine and serotonin and everything. But then if you can't cope with your daily activities, uh, unless you have the food, then you're like, okay, maybe I can work on it without any judgment, of course. Mm. And yeah. I think you had said before that people are happy to discuss kind of alcohol addiction or smoking addictions but they're less comfortable to discuss and face you yeah. know their eating habits and eating eating addictions you know as well yeah there is there's a lot of taboo on this and yeah i've mentioned it um, on social media for example i had someone telling me like um and also trigger alert they were talking about their suicidal ideations Mm. very happy about like comfortable talking about it but then when we moved to the emotional eating they didn't want to identify themselves as emotional eaters maybe because it's the word emotional Mm. Um, i've done some surveys online like with my audience and people prefer the word stress eating Mm. But emotional eating is not just due to stress. It can be due to guilt. It can be due to shame. Mm. It can be due to boredom. You know, there's so many nuances. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting as well how um, when it comes to some eating disorders, it's about control. They're Mm. controlling the portions. And those are the people who have, obviously, like eating disorders like anorexia, those people want to be in control and yeah. and food is a way that they control and yeah. portion control and um so there's that aspect of it it's not just the 
excessive side, there's also, you know, under eating as well. Yeah, definitely. And I've had also some some content on anorexia, and it definitely comes from control. And sometimes it's um, it's not about only the looks. Sometimes it's about getting receiving love. Mm through your body because you you were in that time in, in your life where you had a bit of low self-esteem or very low self-esteem parents that were like emotionally unavailable and then you got the love or the attention um, through like oh you look thin today and they do it for that reason mm. and emotional eating also for your listeners uh, it could be useful for them um, it's a range it's not a cl- it's um, it's not an eating disorder it's everything that's outside it's mm. you have anorexia on one end the other end you have bulimia and binge eating disorder bulimia is when you purge and binge eating is when you don't purge and then in the middle you have emotional eating it's not yet a clinical disorder and for me i found the issue is that there's no there's no there's nothing online for those people <laughs> 